done, I'm going to first look for the white needle. I'm going to use a decently long tail for this because we're going to need to use the yarn to cinch up the top of the hat. I'm going to start by wrapping around the first needle and then I'm going to roll slowly while I bring the yarn behind one needle and then in front of the next and then behind the next needle and then in front of the next, behind and front. And I'm going to do this all the way around the first row. When I get to the end, before the white needle where I had originally put the loop on, that's where I'm going to bring it through here and through the medium tension. I'm going to make sure that you reset your counter to zero. At this point, we're set up and ready to go and we're going to knit for 40 rows. We're about to get to the 40th row as soon as it passes its white needle. So I'm going to cut the main color and put it in the middle to the right side of the white needle. And then I'm going to grab my next color, which is the soft rose. And I'm going to leave about an 8 to 10 inch tail just to be on the safe side. I'm going to put it in here and into the middle tensioner. I like to hold these close and low. And then go nice and slow for the first few stitches here. And you want to make sure that all of those stitches went in, and mine did, so I'm going to keep going. So now I'm going to do 40 rows of the pink. So once I get a few rows in, I am going to tie a little preliminary knot. By the time your work starts reaching 75 rows, it's probably going to start touching the table. So at that point, I like to grab the inside and kind of roll it up. Okay, we just hit 40 rows on the second color. So now I'm going to cut a tail, again about 8 to 10 inches. I'm going to take it out, throw it in the middle, and I'm going to grab the main color again. And we're going to do another 40 rows of the main color. And again, leaving about 8 to 10 inches of a tail placing it firmly in here, in the middle tensioner. All right, I'll see you at the end of 40 rows where I'll teach you how to cast off. After a few rows, I'm gonna come in and tie a quick preliminary knot from the tails where we change colors. Okay, I just finished 40 rows. So in total, we had 40 rows of the main color, 40 rows of the brim color, and then another 40 rows of the main color for 120 rows total. Now we're gonna cast off and we're gonna finish. Okay, we're gonna use the darning needle. We're gonna pull the yarn out of the tensioner. Then I'm gonna grab the second stitch and bring it all the way through. Pull the yarn through. I'm gonna keep going like this, grabbing the stitches. Eventually you can kind of do two at a time. I'm going to continue like this all the way around the loom and I'll see you at the end. Okay, I just grabbed the last stitch, so now we're going to pull the piece out of the machine. And this is my favorite part of machine knitting. I wonder if anyone else feels the same. I love stretching it out at the end. It's very satisfying. Okay, so here is our child size hat, and now we just need to finish it up and assemble it. So I like to connect my machine to whatever surface I'm working on using Velcro tabs. So you'll see when I switch from my knitting machine to assembling the hat, all I have to do is... And that way, when I'm ready to make another project, I'll just bring it back and put it right in Velcro. Now we need to assemble our hat. The first thing we're going to do, because we use two different colors, is I want to go through and make sure that the knots are tied on the inside. So I'm gonna turn it inside out, and I'm gonna look for where we switched colors. So it's a little bit of trial and error to see how tight you want these knots to be, and the nice thing is you can just flip it inside out and see if you're doing it too tight or if you're doing it too loose. So I think that is actually perfect. The great thing about working in a tube is that you don't have to worry about weaving in the ends. You can just leave them like that. If you wanna make them a little bit shorter, you can. You really don't have to. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to firm up the other. Okay, now that's done, I'm going to bring it right side out. And 
right now you will have two ends, or two tails, I should say. And we're going to use those to tighten them up. So in this case, our tube is exactly parallel, so you can choose whichever side you want to be the top and which one you want to be the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is go with the bottom and just start pulling this in tight. You're basically going to close it up. You want to be gentle about it. And then as it closes, you can keep rolling it inward. Once you've got that nice and tight, put the string back on your darning needle and just tie a couple of knots. I like to put the needle through the hole and then I put my right hand through the hat and I grab the needle and I also grab that side of the hat. And then you bring it through. Until you reach the top. And I'm going to use the darning needle to pull that yarn through. Next up, I'm going to find the yarn from the top. Do the same process where I pull it through. And you want to make sure that this string from the bottom is still coming through the top. You want to tighten it up, and as you tighten it up, make sure that you're rolling it inward. So I just cut those yarns to a more manageable size, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a couple of knots. Again, as firm as you can without being so firm that you break the yarn. Next, we want to weave in the ends of the hat. The nice thing about a tube hat is that there's plenty of room to hide your ends. So all you need to do is grab your darn needle, push through, and then try to push through to an area where you're not going to see it on the inside or on the outside. And that's what's nice about these hats, they're actually reversible because you won't see any of the extra strings hanging out on the inside. That's one of the best parts about knitting a tube style beanie is that they're completely reversible. You can wear it inside out and it'll look exactly the same, depending on how you did your colors. So here is our child-sized beanie. You can fold up the brim. You can either leave it like this, or you can add a pom-pom. So now we need to figure out which pom-pom to use. So I'm gonna let my daughter pick out which pom-pom. I think we have to decide which color pom-pom we wanna use. Okay, so my daughter chose the dark pink pom-pom. So I'm gonna put a yarn of my main color on a darning needle, and I'm gonna go through the hat, and I'm gonna come out on the side of the top. I'm gonna to leave a little bit of a tail on the inside of the hat. Then I'm gonna look at the pom-pom. Usually there's a little bit of a loop. I sometimes like to go through the actual pom-pom. I find it helps attach it a little bit more securely. Wherever I came out of the hat, I'm gonna go back in through the opposite side. Flip the hat inside out remove the darn needle. So now I'm gonna add my tag and the hat will be done. I order my tags on Etsy at a store called Archer Knits. Our child size hat is done, what do you think? So we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. The only difference is we're gonna do 50 rows of the main color, 40 rows of the brim, and then another 50 rows of the main color. I'm gonna make the adult size hat and I'll see you at the end. Okay, the adult size hat is done. I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did with the child size and I'm gonna finish up the hat and we'll see you at the end. Okay, our hats are complete. It only took a couple hours using the knitting machines and I had so much fun making them and my daughter loves them and I can't wait to put them on and we'll be matching.